What is vertical tillage? Perhaps better stated, what is true vertical tillage? The basic concept is to work the soil vertically, avoiding the addition of horizontal layers or density changes that will impede root growth and water infiltration. The concept is actually quite simple, but the execution can be challenging. The following video will explain what a vertical tillage tool has to do to improve yields as well as what constitutes a true vertical tillage machine. A plant's root system regulates its overall health. When a seed sprouts, the soil density determines the diameter of the roots. When roots reach an obstruction, the roots will turn and continue to grow sideways. A plant with a shallow root system is more susceptible to drought and may not be able to withstand high winds and definitely has a reduced yield potential. Most of the time, density change layers are formed by conventional tillage tools. As a horizontal or conventional tillage tool is pulled through the ground, it shears the soil, resulting in a lower density above the shear plane and a higher density below. This creates a density change that becomes a barrier to root growth. The soil probe can be utilized to identify these layers. Push the soil probe into the ground through the layers, then gently pull the probe back up. The ball will catch on the bottom of the layer and will show you where the layer is. Another method is to spade a hole, then shave a two inch thick piece from the side and the layers will appear like magic. You can also see the density change in the roots of growing crops. Notice how the roots spread out. Most of the time they are pointing at the problem. You guessed it, you. Many say no-till and time alone will correct these problems, but independent research shows that that is not the case. To prove this, we took three split 30-gallon barrels and drove them into the ground five inches, 46 feet apart. The center one was in 10-year-old no-till. The right one was in the same 10-year-old no-till that had been subsoiled with a Great Plains subsoiler and turbo-tilled 10 months earlier. The left barrel was also in the same 10-year-old no-till that had been subsoiled with a Great Plains subsoiler and turbo-tilled 22 months earlier. Then we poured a five-gallon bucket of water into each barrel to simulate a three-and-a-half inch rain. Using a stopwatch, we measured the amount of time it took for the soil to absorb the water. The no-till barrel had two-and-a-half inches of water at one hour and over three-quarters of an inch of water after two hours. That likely means that most of a three and a half inch rain ran off, reducing soil moisture absorption and increasing erosion. So how did the vertical tilled area do? Both the one and two year old subsoiled areas absorbed the entire three and a half inches in less than 15 minutes. That means rather than running off, the moisture is now stored in the soil profile where the growing crop can utilize it and there was no erosion. Uniform density not only allows the profile to take on more water, it also improves its ability to give it back. Through capillary action, the moisture can move back up to keep the plant healthy. Uniform density also allows the roots to go down and utilize more nitrogen and micronutrients. Maximum use of water, maximum use of nutrients. Ask yourself, if a layer keeps roots from penetrating it, then how will the plant reach the nutrients trapped below? The answer, it won't. Once these layers are present, it is almost certain that they will remain until they are mechanically removed. So what is needed to remove these layers? The best tool is an inline subsoiler. It's designed to reach under the layer and fracture it as it rolls over the tip. When this tool is functioning correctly, it is approximately two inches below the layer, rolling the soil over the points in a wave with no blowout. For a 30 inch spacing machine, this is 13 to 15 inches in depth. And for a 24 inch machine, this is 10 to 12 inches. The shanks must be in line. To reset the entire width of the machine, a minimum of six inches of horizontal fracture must occur. Some manufacturers will stagger every other row to help the subsoiler pull easier, and it does, but it comes at a price. No longer do the shanks work together to create complete horizontal fracture. When the points work alone, they will just tear a hole in the ground, creating soft and hard spots that hinder uniform emergence. 
Another way to get rid of density layers is with a hybrid chisel like a turbo chisel, equipped with a heavy duty toggle trip option. This unique tool is designed to work vertically and incorporates 50 to 60 percent of the residue as it destroys layers. It may take a few passes to completely remove the layers, but this tool is very effective. Finishing the reset profile is where the mistakes are generally made. Once a uniform profile is achieved, special care is needed to keep it that way. The problem is that many of the tools being sold as vertical finish tools are simply high-speed discs. If a tool that has a shovel or cup blade is used just one time, the effects of a vertical tillage profile will have likely been erased. The time and fuel spent subsoiling will have been wasted. Any tool that shears the soil will create a density change layer. The action of these tools compresses the soil passing under the blade and the soil above is lifted and rolled. Gang equipped tools running concave discs are notorious for creating density changes. This recent comparison shows seed beds created by a true vertical tillage machine and a competitive gang style vertical tool. The ridges left by the competitive tool can be clearly seen. Notice how the low concavity blades simply result in incomplete cutout and create a rumble strip for the planter to negotiate. As we look across the tool, notice the inconsistent depth of tillage and unevenness of the soil surface. You will also see many clods created by the compression of the soil. This is not the seed bed that you are looking for. Only a tool that enters and leaves the ground vertically qualifies as a true vertical tillage tool. Even then, not all of them are created equally. There are some tools on the market that are vertical, but lack the ability to maintain consistent depth from blade to blade and lack an effective harrow system. They are equipped with individual coil spring mounted coulders that flex as they are pulled through the soil, creating an uneven seed bed for the planter to plant on. Only a tool that combines all vertical tillage principles coupled with uniform depth from blade to blade will create the perfect seed bed. An excellent seed bed requires that all coulders are operated at the same depth followed by a harrow that removes any high spots on the floor of the seed bed. You might be asking, does vertical tillage really equate to increased yields? Is this really all worth it? The answer is yes. An independent crop consultant took six fields in a corn soybean rotation to test the value of vertical tillage. He started by subsoiling all of the fields to make sure they were consistent. Half of each field was then farmed vertically. The other half was farmed conventionally for the next five years. The vertical tillage protocol was, Following soybeans, the ground was subsoiled in the fall, then vertically finished in the spring. Following corn, the soybeans were no-tilled into corn stalks. The conventional protocol called for the same process every year. Following both soybeans and corn, the ground was chisel plowed in the fall and then disc and field cultivated twice in the spring. The result was a 12.7 bushel average corn yield increase on the vertical tilled portion of the fields. 12.7 bushels of corn every year by only changing your tillage system. Once the five-year study was completed, the question was asked, how would just one pass from a field cultivator affect the vertical tilled site? So they took three of the vertical tilled plots and continued to farm them vertically with one exception. Half of the plot was treated with one pass from a field cultivator. This process put a density change layer three and a half to four inches deep that resulted in a 6 to 26 bushel reduction in corn yield depending on the soil type from just one pass of a horizontal finish tool. The bottom line is that your tillage practice determines the amount of soil profile that is usable by your crop. You want to restrict your yield potential by using a shallow root zone created by horizontal tillage or do you want to unleash hidden yield potential in your fields with an unrestricted root zone created by vertical tillage. To learn more about vertical tillage and the tools that make this concept a reality, stop by your local Great Plains dealer or visit us at www.greatplainsag.com.